guys, we are here today to celebrate Monique's life. I had to do this on tape because there's just no ways that I could have done this. Standing in front, it would be far too emotional and I don't think I would have got the message across. Every life has a purpose or should have a purpose. If there's no purpose in life, then it's not worthwhile living. And Monique had a big purpose in her life and taught us all lessons about life and we learned a lot from her. Monique came from humble beginnings, from an abusive home where things happened beyond her control. She was only a child. I met Monique 15 years ago, just over 15 years ago, just after her 16th birthday. And somehow or other, we struck up a friendship. And she told me about the life and the abuse that she was receiving at home. You know, we became, me and Monique became very good friends. And I took her in, out of this abusive home that she was living in with her mother, who, was, uh, who had boarders living in the house, where abuse was going on, there were drugs going on, and it just wasn't the kind of upbringing that a child should be exposed to. And this affected Monique's life. When Monique was nine years old, her sister Claudia shot herself when Monique was sitting in the lounge of Claudia's flat. And she phoned her mother to tell her mother, Mom, Claudia just shot herself. Her brother also died in a tragic circumstance where he was burnt in Hillbrow. He was in and out of prison with drugs. Her mother eventually shot herself and her grandparents had shot themselves. So what chance did this poor little girl have in life to survive? Well, me and Monique became good friends. I took Monique in and started taking her to the office and she had her own desk. She couldn't even switch on a computer. And those years back, I was importing fireplaces from overseas and I used to send it to site to mix the cement. She did anything gladly and she's willing to learn whatever she could learn and achieve in her the short time that I'd now known her, which was around about six months. Over the years, Monique just achieved and achieved and achieved. And going back to the purpose of life, you know, what was Monique's purpose in life? Well, you know, I believe, and the people have known Monique for all these years. And to me, Monique was a daughter. And all the years that we all knew her, she showed us how to achieve and how what a person can do in life. She started every day coming to the office, answering the phones, using the computer, which she's now starting to learn. And Monique was just the most unbelievable person that wanted so desperately to have a new life. There was a stage in the first six months when me and Monique were friends that uh, we had had an argument and I was going to go drop her back at her mother before her mother killed herself. And she got on her hands and on her knees and hands and knees and begged me, please, Stephen, don't send me back to that life. I won't be able to take it anymore. Please let me stay with you. And she stayed with me and she'd been with me for 15 years. You know, there's so much about Monique. that pe I think that people, all the people knew it because she had this influence and this fun way and whatever Monique did, she did to the fullest. You know, it was such a tragic story and for someone to get over what she had been through, uh, I'd suggested that she go and see a psychologist and she went to the psychologist every single Friday for two years and she became friends with the psychologist and she loved going there on Fridays and talking about her life and trying to sort out all her problems. And after two years of every Friday, it was then three times a month, twice a month, once a month, and eventually the psychologist phoned me and said, Stephen, Monique is now okay. And Monique just continued to excel. She started learning my business in the flooring trade. Then she had left me 
I went to work for a friend that was doing computers and she's there for a year and a half and learned the computer game. You know, one day Moni came to me after many years and uh, she had found, we, she had moved to a, to a property in a place called Drumblade, where we all know is near Walkerville, where we live. And uh, she had a boyfriend at the time by the name of Philip, who I think was one of the best loves of her life. And what happened was she was living in a cottage. She was robbed three times. My business had been liquidated. I was personally sequestrated and I was renting a place which had a small le a lease on a few months to go. And after she was robbed for the third time, I'd said to her, Monique, you either come home to me or you go and stay with Philip. And she decided to stay with Philip. And my lease was over in three months' time after that. And I then went to live in Drumblade, an area where I'd never lived before, and uh, rented a house and she came back and stayed with me. She ran my factory. I had a little, little factory. She ran the machines. She started doing the computers. She worked for a company called Everright in the accounts department. And one day she came to me and said, Stephen, there's a property in Blue Saddle Ranches that the guys want 10,000 Rand for. Blue Saddles was a master bond liquidation. No one wanted to live there. Only five houses were built on 250 vacant stands. And I said, Monique, where are we going to find the money? And I really didn't want to disappoint her. So I said, offer the guy eight. If he takes it, we'll find the money. And she did that and he took it. And that was Monique's property. He put it in her name. She then, at the time, was working for Everart, took a voluntary retrenchment of, and got about 20,000 rand out. Instead of putting sound systems in her car and going on big jaws, Monique decided to go and buy bricks. She built herself a house. She had her first horse come onto the property after baiting them at other properties. She had a passion for animals, a passion for horses. I remember the day she bought her first Sharpe which she's been breeding now for 15 years. She's got to a stage now where she's breeding horses, warm bloods, she's got nine horses currently. Her top horse is a horse called Elastalon, you guys might know it. And this horse we imported from Holland, or rather let me say she imported from Holland. She heard about a horse auction in Holland, she wanted to go to it, not to buy, just for the experience. She stayed with the principal of mine, who is a supplier of mine, in Holland by the name of Fred, and his company was called Elastalon. And Fred took her in, picked her up from the airport, took her in, took her to the auctions, and she, Monique fell in love with one horse. She, Monique had, had a horse that she had bought for 40,000 Rand, her own money. She worked and she earned every cent of it. And she bought the horse and she sold it for 150,000 Rand, and she decided to buy the horse, but she was short of 70,000. Fred, who had only just met her, and I told Fred of her humble, traumatic beginnings, said, don't worry, Stephen, he's going to pay, give Monique the extra 70 grand, which he did. We flew the horse out, or she flew the horse out back to South Africa. We, went, we flew to Cape Town to go and visit the horse in quarantine. Sometime later, Fred came to South Africa to visit us, and we went to see Fred. Monique had got 35,000 rand in cash, and she says, Fred, he has half of the money and the balance will come as soon as I can get it together. And Fred just pushed it back to him and says, Monique, I don't want it. So Fred has become a good friend to Monique. And all the people she met all the years basically loved Monique. Some people didn't like it. We're only human in life. We've all been through things in our life. We've all been and done things in our life. But Monique had a special message. Coming from an abusive family with the trauma involved of seeing all her family die by suicide, and it really touched me, and I took her in, and today I called Monique my daughter. Monique does have a biological father, and a, who is her father, her real father, and Leonard, my condolences are to you. I know you with us today, sitting next to me, and she's the most unbelievable girl. What she's been through in her life, and every time Monique used to laugh, I inside used to cry, knowing what she'd been through in her life, and she can still find laughter and fun. We all know, Monique, what she's did, everything to the fullest. 
She would dance on the tables, fall off the tables. Everything was done to the fullest. She would do it. You know, Monique is ranked around about number 28 in South Africa in dressage, in a horse, on a horse, Elastalon. She, in one event, in an advanced event, came first out of 20. That's a huge achievement. In the old days, year, many years ago, we used to play pool in the pubs in Walkerville, and she joined the pool league. She wanted to win and she took lessons by one of the old South African champs, Mr. Arthur Hayes. And he taught her and he brought her up in, in pool and she became the top number one pool player for Southern Gauteng, the top girl in Southern Gauteng. A hell of an achievement. She's run the Ferenigan Marathon. So whatever Monique did, she did the fullest. She worked for me on and off for all the 15 years and at the end, what Monique was doing, she was working for me. She had just started another little sideline business. And there was a good reason why, because I was uh, maybe going to sell my business and she would then be without a job. And she would start a business installing wooden floors. So at the time of Monique's death, Monique was working for me repping, a team installing wooden floors, breeding horses, breeding dogs, and still fixing computers on the sideline. That's five jobs. You know, if a horse or a dog got ill or sick, she'd make sure it goes to the vet. If somebody, if the horse died, it was in a trauma. She was in trauma if an animal died. She would pick dogs up on the side of the road. And at first, when we started, <laughs> or she'd come with these dogs. I said, Monique, it's enough with the dogs now. It's enough. And, you know, as I said to me, and after a while, <laughs> she brought home dogs. And I said, Monique, well done, my girl. Another dog, I know you enjoy it. You know, Monique's tragic accident, which was an attempted hijacking, where she'd been, she was chased at high speed on a wet road. Yes, she came out of Johnny Walker's pub. That, uh, that doesn't matter to me. She was a Christian. She had found her God. And I know where Monique is today is with her God. That's what she believed, and that's what I believe. Monique, I wish you well. You gave me everything. I've been a bachelor basically all my life and I never had children and Monique was my baby. And I can tell you now that it was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life to experience Monique. Everyone has a purpose in life. And what was Monique's purpose in life? Well, to come out of the gutter of abuse, of all the suicides, of drugs, and to achieve all she achieved. She did accountancy courses. I come home at night and she's studying. I said, what are you doing? She said, no, I'm studying my accountancy courses. She did two of them, she passed them both. She only had a standard seven Monique. But over the years, because of all her passions, for whatever she did, people grew respect from her, for her. Her laughter, she never stopped laughing. And as I said earlier on, every time she laughed, I had a tear inside because I knew of her humble beginnings. So the message in life, people, for what Monique taught us is please, if you're going to be, don't have children if you are abusive and are going to abuse your children, don't have them. But the other message is that if you get out of that abuse like Monique did, and she begged me not to send her back to her mother, and I kept her. And she taught us all that you can come out of, the, out of such abuse and excel. And Monique had to prove to the world, because of her background, that she could do it. A lot of Northern Suburbs children, maybe psychiatrists, doctors, lawyers. <clears throat> and yes, the money was there, the silver spoons, whatever, and they achieved that. But what Monique achieved in her life is the greatest thing and the greatest lesson that anyone could ever do. So Monique, my angel, I love you with all my heart. Whoever's lives you touched, they love you. And I will think of you every day. And I'll never experience anything like this again. You went so soon. I always thought, and I always told you, when I go, you must do your morning, 
Get on with your life. Life is for the living. Get on with your jaws. And now that Monique has gone before me and the pain I feel, in a way I'm happy that she's not suffering the pain of again being alone. You know, two years ago, when Monique found God in this church where we're sitting today, she was so passionate about it. I went to see her baptism. She became a big prayer. She believed she could pray and whatever she prayed for, she will get. And Monique prayed and whatever she prayed for, she got. I remember walking into her house one morning. I was, she was in the bathroom. The Bible was open on the bed. And it just got my heart that she's praying and she's reading her Bible and that she had found happiness. For the last two years of Monique's life, every time I spoke to the phone, she was always in joy, always in happiness. So guys, thanks. I appreciate you coming to the funeral. You, as you can see, she's so well loved, touched so many people. And please take an example from Monique. Whatever you go through in life, whatever you've been through in life, there is a way out. And to the criminals that chased Monique and caused this accident, you will have your day and one day you'll meet your maker and you will pay for what has happened today. However, my angel, you rest in peace. You taught us all a lot. I love you with all my heart. And you go safe and keep on achieving. And I love you. I've got a beautiful girlfriend now, Ursula. And me and her, and Ursula loved you a lot. You loved Ursula a lot in the short time that you really got to know each other. And Ursula's also going to say a few words. Monique's late sister, who was, who had a daughter called Jackie, who was Monique's niece, even though there were only three or four years difference, Monique was Jackie's auntie. And Jackie's going to say a few words. So Jackie will say the few words, and after Jackie you'll let Ursula, she wants to say a few words my baby, and then we're going to show you a few videos, slides of some pictures of Monique, and then we're going to go to West Park Cemetery, and Monique is going to get buried in the same grave as her sister, not her mother, thank God, but the same grave, grave as her sister, where they two can be together now. They both went through hell, as well as Dion, Monique's brother. So thanks for coming, and I'm going to pass you on to Jackie, who also will be too traumatized to try and talk in public in the, at this traumatized stage. Thanks for coming, guys. See you later. Cheers. distance the world looks blue and green and the snow-capped mountains white from a distance the ocean meets the stream and the eagle takes to flight
Mickey, I just want to say thank you for everything that you've done for me. Thank you for being a role model in my life. Thank you for changing my life. You came from very hardship and a very difficult background. An angel came to save your life, Monique, and you took the opportunity and you made the best of it. And you came and you saved my life in the process. Thank you for being a role model to me, for inspiring me, for always approaching every, everything with hope and with love and with happiness. And the biggest laughter straight from your heart. I'm going to miss you so much. You mean everything to me and you know that. I love you, Monique. You really did give life your best shot. You gave it your best, you gave it your everything. And you've given a rainbow a new meaning to so many people. You had such a passion for life. Everything that you ever did, you did it with your whole heart. You had, the kindest you had the kindest words for a random stranger. You could love any animal from the second that you saw it. You loved God, Monique. You, fo you found God most of all. And that also helped to change life entirely. We're really going to miss you. I love you, but I know that you're in a good place. Thank you, my angel, for everything that you did for me. Thank you for giving me hope. Thank you for giving me inspiration. Thank you for always being there for me. Thank you for giving so many people hope. I'm going to miss your smile and I'm going to miss your laughter the most. I don't know what to say, Monique. I'm just going to miss you and I really love you. Like I said, you've given a rainbow a new meaning. And every time that all of us see a rainbow, we're going to remember you underneath that rainbow. I love you, Monique. Monique, there are so many things 
I want to say, I just don't know how to say it. You are my best friend. You were actually like a sister to me. My biggest sister, Anna. I love that about you. We did our nails together. <laughs> we, you guys came to us on Wednesdays to like have a family bride. We used to have a lot of fun. And that's how I'm going to remember you. I know you've had hard times, everyone has. But you made it. You actually brought hope into me that I actually never saw myself. Whenever I hugged you, I felt your energy, your that love, that caring about you and it made me love you. Love you so much that you actually just became my sister. You did so many things, you did so much. <laughs> you did a lot in your life and the most important thing you actually taught me was how to laugh again. How to actually laugh. You and Stephen and my mother uh, and a lot of my friends are a big deal to me and so are you. I can actually smile again and I know you'll be smiling at me and with me because you always belong in my heart and I'll never ever forget you. Nobody would, could ever but I know we can still, we can still be happy knowing that you are happy. I'm looking at the sky right now and I'm thinking, are you looking down at me? And I know you are. You're smiling. <laughs> no more. Pain, no more suffering, just smiling. Because I know you're in a good place. But most of all, thank you for coming into my life. <laughs> you made, you brought me out. You made me see life. And I thank you for that. I love you, Monique. I'll never forget about you. i
Okay, thanks, uh, Jackie and uh, our baby Ursula and uh, guys. If anybody else wants to have anything to say, please uh, feel free to come up. The pastor will invite you up in a minute. And if you don't have anything to say, I know you have a lot of thoughts. We appreciate all that. And the messages that came on Facebook, I've never seen anything like this before, the amount of people that Monique affected in her life. So from here, we're going to go to West Park Cemetery. We'll follow the hearse. We'll bury Monique on top of her sister, like I told you, in the same grave. And the, Monique's last jaw was at Johnny Walker in Walkerville. Please, guys, there is no wa official wake happening for Monique. However, we're going to go back after the cemetery, back to Johnny Walker to have a drink on Monique. If you want to join us, you're welcome, and we'll see you guys there. And I'm going to turn you over back to the pastor. Thanks, guys, for coming. Appreciate it. <laughs>